In this video, you will learn how to track your Amazon sales using Google Sheets. There is a software called Gorilla ROI, which helps to import Amazon seller central data and information into Google Sheets. And in this video tutorial, the founder of Gorilla ROI, Jay Jun, will show you and explain how using his tool, you can uh, track the sales. If you want to try the software, in the description of this video, you'll find a link which will also give you a 10% off if you decide to sign up with one of their plans. And uh, of course, if you like information and videos we create, don't forget to click the like button below this video and subscribe to our channel. Hi, I'm Jay with Gorilla ROI. We allow you to connect Amazon Seller Central directly into your Google Sheets so that you can automate the entire data importing process. Um, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create and get data so that you can create your own Amazon Sales Tracker. I want to show you how you can make an Amazon Sales Tracker. Something like this is the final goal, but rather than showing you every single detail step by step, I want to show you the core foundation that you can use to create and ultimately come up with a tracker like this. You can see 14 days, 60 days, this year, last year, it has so much more information than what Amazon provides you in Seller Central. You can see it based on a breakdown um, for today, you can see for, you can create something where you can actually compare the different trends between seven days, 30 days, see whether something is going up, down, um, and really have a better handle on your business. The driver of this specific section is created by this table. It's a table of all the sales. And if you try to get this information all by hand, it's going to be close to a nightmare. You're not going, it's going to take forever to try and get something for each of the SKUs over the last last week, uh, last seven days, yesterday, last 60 days. By using all of this data, by being able to get this data directly into Google Sheets, you get so much flexibility. And here's how to create this type of table. I'm going to create something from scratch. So new tab, it always starts with the SKU, right? So if you want to load a SKU, you can do, I'll, I'll just do my tables up here. Okay, my header SKU, I want to get the ASIN. I want to get the FN SKU as well. I always like to get the image um, just so that I know what I'm looking at. And then I'm going to actually, this is going to be the image URL. This is going to be the actual image and then the title. These columns are pretty much the core foundation of any report that you can generate um, so that you can quickly identify what a product is, right? On the SKU, it's as easy as typing Gorilla. Once you have our add-on installed, Gorilla underscore SKU list. And as you type, the formula is populate. This specific tele, um, seller account is going to be test seller two, okay? And that's pretty much all I need to do. Um, it already knows that I'm going to be uh, loading a US-based account. Now for the ASIN, I could pretty much do the same thing. I could load the ASIN, but I want to make, make sure the ASIN matches this SKU, right? So I'm going to use a formula where it converts, bulk converts a SKU into an ASIN. So Gorilla underscore SKU ASIN. Again, this is test seller 2. Okay, comma. And for the list of SKUs I want to do, rather than just doing one SKU at a time, the beauty with um, our formulas is that you can do everything in bulk. So even if you have 1,000 SKUs, you can get the ASINs for all of those 1,000s in one go. So that's going to make things so much easier. Uh, so that's up to six, A16, comma. And for the direction, it's going to be SKU to ASIN. And then wait for that to load. It only takes a few seconds. If you have thousands and thousands of SKUs, it's gonna take a little bit longer, but it's not gonna take like an hour or something. Okay, same thing with the FN SKU. I'm gonna convert this SKU into an FN SKU. Gorilla underscore F SKU, FN SKU. Again, test seller two, 
The reason for entering the test cell accounts on this specific video that I'm showing you is because um, if you have an agency or if you have multiple different cell accounts, um, you are able to specify which cell account. For the most people, for most people, you won't even be needing this. You can just keep it empty depending on um, the type of account that you use. Okay, for the SKU again, eight a sixteen, comma. And for the direction, I'm going to do skew to fn skew. Close that formula, and boom, um, it's now converted the skew into an fn skew. To get the image URL, I'm going to now use a formula called product to get the product info. Right, test seller two, comma again same skews, comma. For the attribute, we have a lot of different attributes. I'm getting the image URL here, small image underscore URL. But we have a website and on our documentation page, um, you can see, for example, on our resources, tutorials, okay, going to product, PPP, product, you can see all the different um, attributes that you can support. So if you want to bring like the brand name, the size, the dimensions, um, the label manufacturer, whatever, you can do that. In this case, again, I'm doing small image underscore URL. Going to close this formula up because that's all I need. And it's going to list and um, provide the image of the main image of, for this listing. And now if I want to convert this into an actual photo or something, an image, I can use Google's image function to wrap it and then I'm going to do this which will now convert that URL into an image so I drag this down and now you can see that I now have pretty much the main title um, or the main listing images for the product itself to bring the title up I'm going to do the same thing gorilla instead of small image URL I'm now going to do title test seller 2 comma again a2 to a16 comma title right and it pulls up the title on this specific formula like all the ones that I've been manually typing it in just to help you see how it works but what you can also do is rather than manually typing things in you can, it's Google Sheets, right? Everything's dynamic, you can reference. So rather than typing in it, I can just select F1 and then it will know that it's the title. And then if I later on wanted to say, convert this to something else and I wanted to bring up the brand, then because it's all dynamic, it now pulls in the brand. If I wanted to get like the size, I wonder if there's anything for size. Um, there you go, it pulls in all this information uh, based on whatever the title is. So well, what the header is, so I'm going to convert this back to title. And since I really want to only care, I only care about um, creating that sales tracker for you in this video, let me just copy all of these periods. Okay, so these are all custom time periods that we support. Okay, copy paste. Okay, let me just wrap it so that you can actually see. So all of these time periods I have now to get the sales units sold for each, for two day, for each of the SKUs, gorilla underscore sales count is what we support. Oops, I misspelled gorilla, I did three L's. Gorilla sales count, and I knew I misspelled it because the drop downs wasn't showing up. Um, I'm gonna select sales count, or you can use tab. Test seller two, comma, and for the period, I have copied and pasted all the periods that what I want to get on the headers, right? So I'm going to cl click on that, comma. For the marketplace, I can leave it empty since it's US. But if you're in, say, Germany, you can do like Germany or UK, etc. Or you can click a, you can create like another um, cell that has a list of all your marketplaces and then click that cell and make it dynamic as well. Marketplace empty for the SKU, it's A2 to A16 again. And I'm gonna this time 
press F4 to lock the reference in. So you see the dollar signs, that's going to reference, lock the reference so that when I drag to the right, it doesn't shift that skew column to the right each time, which is what um, spreadsheets do, right? Comma, for the status, I want everything. So let's just do all. And all of this information, it's available when you type it in inside these windows, the um, the explanation window. So you can just go through it one at a time. I just, I've just i just done this so many times that I can remember what the variables are. So I've got all, and then this is all I need. All the other ones are optional. I don't need that. So I'm just looking for the test seller account for today for these SKUs for all the sales. Okay, press enter. And then in a few seconds, it pulls up all the units sold I've sold today for each of these SKUs. Now, to do, now to get all of this, rather than having to retype everything, the beauty with Google Sheets is I can just drag to the right. And now I'm getting hundreds of data points for each of these time periods in one shot, just like that. So within, say, 10 minutes here where I've explained and probably rambled on, um, you've got all of this sales units sold for each of the ASINs um, and the products that you have in your account. And by doing it like this, you can now format it in a pretty way and create a nice looking table that looks like this. You can share with your clients, you can share with your employees, or just, um, just for your own personal preference. So that's how you can create a Amazon sales tracker with Gorilla ROI simply by loading all of this data using ready-to-go functions that we support. So that concludes our tutorial, but don't forget you can get 10% off recurring um, by using Orange Click's link. So check out the link below and we'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you would like to try Gorilla for yourself, uh, check the link below in the description. It will give you also a 10% off in case you would like to sign up with them. And now I would like to invite you to watch the full demo tutorial about Gorilla ROI where Jay June explains and shows a lot of functions and what you can do with this software.